Hi, Chuck Hawley from West Marine. You know, one of the challenges for people installing their own marine, marine electronics has been trying to get things to talk to each other, like trying to get a GPS to talk to an autopilot. And for years, this was kind of the realm of the professional because it was difficult to get, especially one manufacturer's product, to talk to another. Well, this has virtually all changed as a result of the introduction of the NEMA 2000 network protocol. This is a, NEMA stands for National Marine Electronics Association, and it's a group of uh, marine electronics manufacturers who get together and develop standards for the industry. NEMA 2000 makes it so much easier to install any kind of a network on your power or sailboat. And I'll give you a quick example. Now I'm going to be using items from Garmin, but all of the things that I'm showing you would be plug compatible with products from Ray Marine or Lowrance or possibly Xantrex or other vendors in the industry. So it doesn't just have to be navigational electronics, and it certainly doesn't have to be from one vendor. So we'll start out with a display. In this case, we're going to be using the GNI 10. This is a really, uh, pardon me, GMI 10. This is a really beautiful product. This replaces most of the four and a quarter inch instruments that you'd have on your boat. It's uh, surface mounted. You cut about a three inch hole into your bulkhead, put some fasteners through, and you're all set to go. On the back, it has a power connection right here, and it also has a NEMA 2000 connector, which incidentally, they're all the same. Everything's plug compatible, meaning you don't have to have like a Garmin special connector. They're all the same. So when I turn this on, you get a gorgeous color display. In this case, it's mostly monochrome, but it's white, black, and a lot of different colors. And it gives you a variety of pieces of information. I could show depth, temperature, speed. I could show engine um, information about RPM, oil pressure, oil temperature, water pressure, water temperature, anything I want on this one little display. And it can do that, again, because of the NEMA 2000 data bus. So, the first thing that happens in, in an installation like this is that you have to put a cable which goes from here down to the network. And in this case, I'm using, I think it's a two meter cable. It uh, plugs in, it's polarized, very solid connection. And it's waterproof, that connection's waterproof. Okay, the problem is I've got a display, but I don't have anything connected to it. So what am I gonna connect to it? Well, I may have mentioned before that I recently bought a 21 foot Zodiac with some other guys from West Marine. And I wanna measure fuel flow so that I can see the most economical speed to run my boat at. So this is the Garmin fuel flow meter, and it is designed to be mounted in the fuel line. So what you do is you take off these protective plugs, you cut the fuel line, you stick this in place, put some hose clamps on it, and you're ready to go. Now the reason it has two cables, one is for power, and one is NEMA 2000. But you should realize that some sensors are powered entirely by the NEMA 2000 bus, and so you'd only be running one wire to it. Because this is also in sort of an explosive environment, they don't give you any connectors. The connectors are 20 feet away at the end of the cable, so you can make your connections away from the fuel system. Okay, so now we've got this. Here's the end of the fuel sensor cable. So, how do I connect these things together? Here's one end and here's the other end. You use these T connectors, and the T connectors are always identical. They have a male and a female, and then they have a place where the drop cable comes in from the bottom. You always attach the sensor or the display to that T portion, the bottom portion of this. So here's the first one. This happens to be the fuel sensor. Here's the one from the display. Okay, now these connect like that. You can see how it's starting to be a little data bus. The bus goes this way and then the drop cables drop down. Okay, the next thing you have to do is that every NEMA 2000 network has to have power to it. It doesn't draw much power, but you have to run power to it. So I'm gonna put in another T connector and this yellow power cord. Okay. So what do I have? Display, fuel flow sensor, power. There's one last thing. All NEMA 2000 buses have to be terminated. What does that mean? Well, it means that you take one of these little resistive caps and you put it on each end of the bus. 
So we're going to screw this one on here. That's got a little uh, male connector. Put this one on here. That's got a little female connector. And voila, we are done. So now we've got the data bus. Okay, so what three things did I have? Well, four things. I have a sensor. I have a display. I have power. And I have terminators. And it's all in a nice linear form. The, it's a really important to do this. Hey, incidentally, let's say that I had a bunch of stuff in the stern of the boat and a bunch of stuff and maybe in the console or the wheelhouse of the boat. I can break this and put in a drop cable between these to go between them so I can extend where these T-connectors are. The T-connectors don't have to all be in the same spot. Okay, well, my display is now showing zero fuel flow. And you're probably not supposed to do this, but I'm going to blow into my fuel flow meter. And you can see it's already going. Okay, that's a really simple system. Let's say now that I've had my boat for a couple of weeks and I decide, you know, I really want to have a, a depth sounder. Well, this is what it would look like. It doesn't look like a normal depth sounder. All it is is a transducer that goes on the NEMA 2000 bus. So let's see how this works. Take it out of the package. It's got this funny thing, this thing, and a cable. Now, this looks a lot like a standard uh, fish finder sonar transducer. In this case, it's a semi-flush model with a big fat gasket very, very thin profile. So I'll spin off this nut, drill a two inch hole in the bottom of my boat, stick this in place, spin down the nut, I'm good to go. And it has this connector. This connector now connects up to a little electronics brain box. And the idea is that this is really where the electronics of the fish finder are located now. That's gonna do all the work. These two pieces mate together like that. That's an IntelliDucer, right? It's an intelligent transducer. Now, I take another one of these NEMA 2000 cables. I connect it to my IntelliDucer. Take the other one. Remember, what do I always need? I always need a T-connector. Here's the T-connector goes into the T side just like the other ones, screw that down, break my little network for a second, put this in place, add it back together. I mean, how simple is this? It's incredible. And now I've got the ability to show depth on the same network. It's just that simple. Now. I don't know if it's going to show me depth, so let's go through the pages here. De oh, depth. There it is. Now, the problem with demonstrating depth when you're not in the water is that it doesn't transmit through air very well. So let's see if I can. I used to be able to get a setting if you'd hold it really close to a surface. No, nope, doesn't quite work. But notice that as soon as I connected the IntelliDucer on the network, it knew that it was there, and it started showing me depth as one of the pages. And I can just go through here. Water temperature, it does know the temperature from the thermistor that's built into it. Back to fuel flow. What could be easier by simply adding transducers or sensors to the network, plugging the T connectors together, putting the terminations on the end, putting power to it? I've now created a network just by using my fingertips. I'll show you a couple more things that we can add to it. This is a Garmin um, NEMA 2000 GPS. So the whole darn GPS is in here. I mean, it doesn't have a display, but it has the antenna and it has all the electronics. And if I had wanted to, there's probably a rule against disconnecting and reconnecting this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I could have put this together like this, and I, you know, this is brand new out of the box, but now I'm going to have the option of bringing up GPS information on here. So, and if I don't like that, I can press menu, add or remove a page, select, add a page. I'm going to add uh, navigational pages. Let's see, wind pages, surface page, surface pages. GPS ground speed, select. Add another page, yes. 
surface pages. Uh, let's add course over ground. Uh, yeah, let's do course over ground. No. In just a few seconds, I've set this up so it'll show me speed over ground and course over ground because it sensed that this GPS antenna was on the network. It's just that simple. Okay, just one more. Because this is a sailboat and a powerboat instrument, you have to have a wind sensor. This is the beautiful, elegant masthead wind sensor that Garmin's come up with. And it, like most of them, it has a combination of wind direction and wind speed. Guess what? Another NEMA 2000 cable. So we're going to run the NEMA 2000 cable down to the base of the mast. And this is the one time where they allow you to cut off the end and run the bare cable down so you can put it through a smooth, smaller diameter. Incidentally, look how sensitive that is. There's virtually no breeze where I'm sitting right now and it's turning. So we can add a wind sensor into this system just like I added the GPS, just like I added the IntelliDucer, just like I added the fuel flow sensor. I know that's a lot to get in one uh, video, but I wanted to give you an idea of how simple it is to put things together. First of all, with the NEMA 2000 network uh, protocol, and also with these new products from Garmin. They are all really uh, competitively priced, and instead of looking at some dumb monochrome display all the time, you get a full color display with high resolution that can show you graphics, it can show you compass rows, it can show you bar graphs, all sorts of different things. Well, that's all for today. These products are available from West Marine. Mm -hmm.